Well, welcome to Opinions. Dr. David Robinson is with us here on this Opinions section brought to you by, of course, Friendly to Seniors. Happy to have you here with us. Of course, uh, you're a professor at uh, Laurentian University. Uh, economics is your field. That's right. And uh, you're also a uh, director of the Institute of Northern Ontario Research and Development. Yep. But you, uh, you know, besides looking at Northern Ontario, you looked at Sudbury specifically and a number of issues over the years. And uh, you, you've, you've, you've contributed to the dialogue in, in many different areas. And uh, quite recently, we've been looking at uh, dialogue with respect to Mailey Drive and also the <laughs> railway right. and also other economic concerns in, in the community. And uh, you're recently a candidate for the Green Party in our, in our recent uh, provincial election. And uh, yes. so you've been a busy person. I'm being busy. I've tried to be just an economist talking about the economics of all these issues. Well, the issue, of course, with respect to Mealy Drive, and we've had a lot, we uh, had Tom Price uh, on this, uh, on this uh, exercise uh, a while back, and uh, we talked about uh, Mealy Drive. And of course, there's been a lot in the newspapers with respect to Mealy Drive. There's Tom's bit here, a consultant critical of the project. That was Tom. Uh, the, the, the editor of the paper saying that the the project could be killed if we hesitate, and uh, mm. the Mealy Drive doubters, and of course we've had a number of people commenting that we better get going on this thing because it's been on the books for 30 years. Mealy Drive, that's uh, just an idea there, that yellow marking there, that's that's Mealy Drive as, as it's uh, sort of anticipated at the present time. And of course, uh, you've contributed as well too, and I think you said in a, in a newspaper column that uh, mainly drive a fiscal suicide. This is fiscal suicide, I s suppose. That's what I think, yes. Are you referring to the city or to residents of the city or to taxpayers or? Talking about taxpayers. If you take on a whole bunch of debt, and that's what mainly drive involves, the total cost of that thing, I'd say a minimum of $120 million probably a lot more. I don't care what the city says, they're talking about just part of the project right now, and they're talking about only spending 20 odd million dollars of city money. But once they start running over their 75, 80 million dollar price, what's gonna happen is all the rest of that falls on taxpayers. If it goes to 120, as I'm talking about, then we're talking about 65 or 70 million dollars added to the city's debt. You know, the Mealy Drive itself, I don't think a lot of people quite understand, and we talked to Tom, uh, he clarified it, that Mealy Drive is not really a road into the valley. A lot of people feel that Mealy Drive is actually a road out into the valley, which is not. No, Mealy uh, Drive was originally designed when the city was growing literally exponentially mm -hmm. uh, by 5.5% a year, and the expectation then was that the northeast part of the city would keep on growing, that it would go from 10,000 people to 20 or 25. Mm -hmm. Well, it's still at 10,000. The project to take the, tra the northeast population past New Sudbury, which was developing, right. and get it into the downtown and over to uh, what's now Valet, was designed when the population was growing rapidly. Mm -hmm. Well, what's happened is that Valet no longer has 18, 20,000 people working for them. That's true, so around that, about five now. That's right, right. Yeah. so that chunk of traffic is gone. Mm -hmm. The population in the Northeast didn't grow. The justification for that project just never came, it never actually materialized. Uh, it, was, it, was, it was based on good projections in 1970. But times have changed. In 1980, they were dead. No council since then has seen it worth spending a lot of money on. Now how about this other, I don't know if you want to call it a misconception, that it's a ring road that is going to go from <laughs> Highway 17, you know, connecting over to the other side of Highway 17, going around the top part of the city. Now this isn't the case either, as I understand. You need a ring road when you have a lot of traffic. Hmm. We have a, a bypass on the south that mm -hmm. takes care of all the traffic from Toronto and Ottawa going west. Right. There's almost none that goes north through here. Mm -hmm. How about traffic coming from the North Bay, coming from uh, coming from the east, going through the west? Uses the ring, ring road that's up. already there. Yeah. The 
the Maley Drive extension doesn't shorten that trip. Mm -hmm. So, uh, if, if, if it was actually... If it were there, it would not shorten the trip, yeah. so people would still use the Southern Bypass. Now, the City and the Chamber of Commerce together, and I must admit as a disclaimer, I'm a member of the Chamber of Commerce, Yes, uh, but uh, I've, I, I'm not too sure about some of the logic that has been <laughs> presented by the Chamber or by, or by the City with respect to this particular project. Is it, are they going by, as you mentioned, some of these 1970 figures? And I know that I, I, I just came across a, a, a document back from, I think it was 1973, when they had the population at that time of 159,000, which is basically what we have now. It's what we have now. So, And a lot of it has increased in the south end of the city. Mm -hmm. Not in the north, no. the south end, and up the valley. Maley Drive is at right angles to the demand from the north, so it doesn't serve and it does nothing for the south end of the city. Yes, as we've seen here on our, <laughs> on our little map, this is, this is the north part, right? And really the south is, is where everything's happening, basically. The biggest growth in the city is right down here mm -hmm. and way up here. Mm -hmm. So it goes this way. Maley Drive goes that way. It can't solve serious transportation problems. Mm -hmm. Now, the chamber mentioned, and the city, as I said, because they're both on the same page on this, they say that it's going to support the local mining industry and uh, prepare the city of Greater Sudbury to meet the future mining development needs. It's going to have significant economic benefits because we're helping the mining industry. Uh, mm, okay. It's, it's, uh, <laughs> and I've been told that, you know, that the mining industry is going to be expanding significantly and therefore they need this road. I, I'm not exactly sure how I follow that, but what's your, what's your feeling? There's two sets of questions there. One is about possible economic benefits for the city. The other is possible economic benefits for the mining companies. Right now what we do is we subsidize valet. We give them money by paying for their roads. Now in lots of places, when a mining company uses municipal roads, it pays a fee. Timmins is talking about that right now. Mm -hmm. If we simply charged the fee, we'd have all the money we needed, and the mining companies would start thinking seriously about going back to the railroad and they'd get those trucks off the road. Is it legally possible to charge? Of course it is. You can, you can charge a differential. We have pay toll roads in Ontario right now. Mm -hmm. Now, Maley Drive, if it were a toll road, wouldn't pay for itself. There isn't enough demand to justify it. But if you put a toll on, on all vehicles traveling in, in Sudbury on the major roads, mm -hmm. You think drivers might hate that, but, <laughs> but let's set the toll at if you're larger than, say, two passenger car equivalents. Right, that, right. Would, that would let pickup mm -hmm. trucks and passenger ca cars go yeah. free, and then you'd add on top of that. Mm. Well, well they're, they're talking about adding a tax to hotel rooms. So <laughs> now, now, that will hurt the economy. <laughs> that will hurt the economy. Add a tax where if a truck is the equivalent of a thousand vehicles, as the city engineer says, right. they're paying 998 vehicles worth a fee. That's right. That means the city's going to get the money it needs to pay for mm -hmm. the roads, and it means there won't be any more trucks than they have to send along those routes, right? Mm -hmm. Well, once again, going back to the paper here, uh, it's reduce attracting about a thousand to fifty trucks and transports away from the interior road system, so you're putting them from our <laughs> presence roads onto onto the new road, right? I know Tom Price said, "Well, you're going to have to maintain the new road as well." Yes. Um, now he's an engineer, so his argument uh, is essentially yeah. that the amount of maintenance depends on the amount of vehicles. Spread That's it out right. over two roads, you just have two roads yeah. with the same amount of maintenance. I think it would actually cost more myself, yeah. but I'm not sure if Tom refers to himself exactly. He refers to himself more as a as, as a project analyst. In other yes. words, okay. look at the, like looking at the project and seeing okay. if it's possible from an engineering standpoint. I guess well, I guess anything's possible, but uh, you know the environmental benefits here is something that really is is in your ballpark, really, because mm -hmm. you know I remember with your in your campaign, uh, you mentioned the environment really time and time again, and uh, the uh, city and the chamber are touting this as a real benefit because it's going to be reducing carbon uh, loading and it's going to uh, uh, save fuel 
uh, and uh, all these type of figures. Yes. Well, as an economist, I think saving fuel is a really good idea, mm -hmm. and you want to do it in the way that it's cheap. That is, you don't want to spend a hundred million dollars to save a small amount of fuel when you could simply say move those loads to the railroad and save a lot amount of mm -hmm. fuel, and you wouldn't have to spend that twenty five mm -hmm. million dollars. But the, the mining companies in the first place are on the road because it was cheaper than going on the railroad. The mining companies are on the road because they didn't want to pay for the cars that it took to carry the ore. Mm. The railroad company didn't want to pay for the, the cars because b the mining company was saying, we're going to leave in five years, we're going to leave in ten years. Well, it turned out to be a lie. Yeah. If they'd bought the cars, it would have been cheaper. But, but all the all the all the material from the mining companies companies mm -hmm. doesn't necessarily go along Mealy Drive. <coughs> no, you no, you'd absolutely certainly have still have some trucks because yeah. uh, there's other roads within the municipality that that uh, that have these trucks mm -hmm. transversing them on a daily basis. <laughs> so they're all mm -hmm. not going to go to Mealy Drive supposedly. Even if you could all get them all to Mealy Drive, <laughs> which is highly questionable. Mm -hmm. Um, or at least all of the ones that have to go through LaSalle. Even if you could do that, you wouldn't get the traffic up the valley, you wouldn't get a lot of other traffic out of the way. Unless, of course, you buy a lot more, essentially, mm -hmm. new roads for trucks. I've done a bit of a calculation, and I figure that the savings for the trucking companies is somewhere in the range of eight to $10 million. If you put in Maley Drive, the, the amount of time that they save is somewhere in that range. Could be mm -hmm. a bit more, could be a bit less. Uh, so this is a real benefit to them. It is, it's a real benefit yeah, sure. to the trucking companies until the first contract comes up. The next time the contract comes up, the mining companies say, hey, it doesn't cost you that much. Maybe someone will do it cheaper. They get bid down, and the mining company takes $10 million and delivers it to the banks in Brazil. You know, when, when you look at this from a... <laughs> <laughs> Have you ever noticed that? I mean, that's what well, it's doing. Ten million dollars go to some banks in Brazil. <laughs> well, you know, talking about money transfer, is, as you know, uh, what happens is that uh, we really can't tax the mining companies here in town with respect to the resources. That, that really goes to the province and then they send back a transfer payment, as it were. However, these transfer payments seem to decrease every year. So, in effect, we are, if I can make an editorial comment here, in effect, we're, we're really helping out both the mining companies and the province uh, to our detriment. We're paying for the roads, they're getting the money. Yeah. So, going back to an actual cost-benefit analysis of this whole thing, and this is something that it bothers me with respect to, I feel that maybe the <coughs> Chamber and the Regional Development Corporation and the councillors and the Mayor should be looking at the cost benefit to this, so what it's really going to mean to the average citizen over time. And, and this is something you've looked at. I have, I've tried to add up the benefits. Mm -hmm. And there are benefits that come to about a third of what I think the cost of this project is, mm -hmm. a little more than a third. Of course, if you take off the benefit to the bankers in Brazil, mm -hmm. then the main two pieces are transfers that go to property owners up the valley. They go from people in the south part of the city. We pay for it. And the, the property it, values are increased because of the road? Yeah, because a certain amount of the traffic from essentially the northeast mm. sector would take the Maley Drive and save a couple minutes a day. Mm -hmm. Now that's not a large number of vehicles because there's only 10,000 people here. There's probably only 2,000 vehicles moving. Most of them are still gonna go yeah, the the way, yeah, right, right. So they're not so yeah. so say you got fifty percent of them, which would be incredibly high percentage taking the bypass along Maley Drive. What you add is perhaps eight million dollars total value over the entire future of Maley Drive mm -hmm. to property values up the valley. Now you've got ten thousand people, divide that among all those people. Essentially you get an increase of what five hundred dollars? <laughs> this is this is taxation five, increases. You get in, in no, you get an increase of about five hundred dollars in property value property for everybody value. up but there. But does not result in increased taxation. Well, that's city? right. So we get we get to tax a small part of that back. Mm -hmm. 
doesn't come close to paying for Maley Drive. Hmm. Okay, so now you want to do the same thing for New Sudbury, because right. that's the only other place that's affected. Mm -hmm. But the, the Maley Drive is above New Sudbury, actually. Well, that's right. right. But this, the theory is Maley Drive is going to take traffic off of LaSalle. Okay. And if it takes traffic off of LaSalle, people are going to be able to drive more, and they're going to be able to drive mm -hmm. faster, and they're going to be happier. Mm -hmm. And that means their houses are going to be worth a little bit more when they come to sell them because they can get down to the mm -hmm. courthouse faster. Right? <laughs> they can get to the coffee shop faster. Okay. <laughs> so their property is worth a little bit more. The total value there is about $20 million. Mm -hmm. now, How so, does that translate into the tax base then? Well, you, you, what's the mill rate? It, it depends on how it's much. It's about you're, four yeah. or five yeah. per thousand. And it depends what the city needs, of course, too. Pardon? It depends what the city needs. Yeah, so, so yeah. what happens is yeah. you take about 3 or 4% mm -hmm. of right. that increase in property mm -hmm. value, but it's spread out over 100 years. All right. And also, you know, I've, I'm, I'm, this is why I'm asking an economist. <laughs> if, you, if you're looking at the cost of this particular project and what it's going to, and, uh, you know, we, we are a seniors organization, friendly to seniors, and we're associated with the the Canadian Association of Retired Persons as well, and our, our general memberships seem to be uh, tax sensitive, if I can put it that way. So what, you know, this, these, these benefits you mentioned here, which as you say come to about a third of the value of the whole project, but nevertheless the actual cost of the project is borne by the taxpayers. So, That's right. So, so what does this mean to the average taxpayer if indeed this project is going to, even though it's getting federal and provincial funding, we are going to pay for the extra costs that are associated with it, I would imagine, over, yep. over the period of the, of the project and the maintenance and that. What does that really do for us citizens and us seniors in particular if, if, if taxes go up? And, and will taxes go up or is this going to be, it, it said here that, uh, you know, that, uh, hey, uh, we put away money. We put away $10 million and we're putting 2.3 million each year to cover it, but we do, we do have to come up with another. <laughs> the, the really important number there is 2.3 million dollars per year. That's the interest on this project. Oh. So that's essentially the addition to taxes that we have to spread out over, uh, let's see, is it about 80, 75,000 households? Mm -hmm. So each household gets I have to, I can't do this arithmetic in my head. I've got to knock off a bunch of zeros. Um, but it's going to cost us more. Yeah. yeah. It's going to, we have to pay that, and we spread it out over everybody. So that's the addition to the tax bill that Maley Drive implies permanently. Permanently. It doesn't go away. That's paying the interest on Maley Drive. That's not paying our share of the federal and provincial interest. That's only no. paying the city's interest. Is this paying the, for the maintenance and that as well? No, 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 no. Oh, we have so. to pay for maintenance. That's yeah. a really good question. Yeah. You have to add another couple million dollars a year for maintenance at least. Mm -hmm. Another question that came up, uh, and I'm not sure how, what you think about this, but you know, with respect to population, with res respect to vehicle growth and, and, and traffic flow, uh, some people have suggested we've reached some sort of, if not a saturation point, some sort of uh, level point or maybe even a point of, of decline. Uh, people say that, you know, the population really hasn't grown that much. It's been stable over a number of years, but the number of vehicles seem to have, have grown. But has, has that reached a point where of, uh, of no return, if you will? Uh, cities like Sudbury, when they have a solid economic base, and we have, are maintaining their population, but basically not growing. So you have the big ones growing, the small ones shrinking, and Sudbury size is, so long as we have an economic base and we have in mining, it stays about the same. What tends to happen, what's starting to happen now, is that rather than the 1950s spread as everybody had families and wanted a big yard, mm. we're moving towards an older population that needs to be more concentrated and has, doesn't have a growing income. So you want, you basically want a development strategy that makes running your, your city cheaper. That means concentrating the population. Mm. If you look at the map of Sudbury, we have a tremendous amount of open land close oh, to the yeah. core. Mm -hmm. if, you, if I was gonna be retiring, I would rather retire in a place with mm. access to the ground downtown than up the valley. 
put me up the valley and I'm in trouble. I don't have the services, I have to travel a lot, my costs are higher. So the logical thing to be doing now is concentrating our development in the downtown area. That's what the city, that's what the Northern Growth Plan mm -hmm. suggested we should be doing. That's what every city planner I know <laughs> yeah, is yeah. suggesting. That's what our city official plan suggests, that's right. and Maley Drive contradicts it. Speaking about uh, the downtown, uh, you know, lately we've had a number of rail accidents. Uh, yes. Some people are, are scared to death of what could happen if uh, uh, a large uh, oil train, I guess you'd call them that now because that's basically what they are, they're oil trains, uh, either dumped into Ramsey Lake, which would be a bit of a disaster, but if exploded downtown, it would be even possibly worse, uh, or both. But uh, there's a lot of land down there that's occupied by the railway, and we know that we know the railway is not happy about slowing down coming through town, but they're also unhappy about spending a couple of hundred million dollars to move the tracks. But uh, mm -hmm. is this a conversation that do you think the time has, has come? I think the time has come for this. I think the benefits, the economic benefits of the city of getting that land that's in the yards um, accessible for development as part of the downtown is huge. Suddenly a bunch of traffic problems go away. Mm -hmm. Suddenly you have spare land down there for recreation centers, art galleries, uh, convention center, yeah. all of the other things we want. And There's, housing. And housing yeah. especially. Yeah. Yeah. And some more park space which we yeah. could use. Yeah. Uh, so, and parking. I mean, people, oh. <laughs> people talk about parking, yes. right? Okay, so... so we that, laugh, but it's... It's, uh, it's true, it's, it's true. Very true. That's, that strip of land the railroad is sitting mm. on is now the most valuable piece of property in Northern Ontario. Mm. Could we then perhaps look at, you know, diverting our thoughts away from Mealy Drive toward, which, as you said, if the railway solution were to be realized, we wouldn't have the the other problems, perhaps. <laughs> That's right. I, if I were the city, if I were the mayor, can you imagine <laughs> me as the mayor? <laughs> well, we could almost imagine you as MPP. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you could imagine me as the mayor, I would be saying the city plan calls for getting rid of these yards mm -hmm. as if it's at all feasible. So the city wants to do this. We have $27 million that we've committed to Maley Drive, which we know is a waste. Mm. So what we'll do is we'll put that on the table. Our share of moving the rail yards mm -hmm. would be $27 million if it's matched by the feds and if it's matched by the provincial government and if the railroad comes in and pays their share. Mm -hmm. Now there's, there is really significant advantages for the railroad. The railroad gets faster transit, less insurance cost, mm -hmm. better switching, um, it avoids the risk of dumping oil into Ramsey Lake or having a fire mm -hmm. downtown. It doesn't have any level crossings or needn't have any level crossings if it goes out and around the city. And the plan has been sitting there. The city had a study done in 1972 that said it was feasible. In 72? 72, and they repeated it in 1982, mm -hmm. and that study said it was feasible. The reason it didn't go ahead at that point is that all the benefits of moving it went to other municipalities because we didn't have mal amalgamation. Mm -hmm. So the city wouldn't get the tax benefits of moving. It would lose the tax for the yards. Now what would happen is if we redevelop the yards, we would get an increase in ta tax revenues from the yards. If we took the tracks out or we just cut the traffic, the mainline traffic through there, property values all along the north side of Ramsey Lake would go up, mm -hmm. tax revenues would go up. We would be able to attract engineering firms downtown, and that's where our strength is, is increasingly it's in engineering, mining innovation, and so on. I think you've, you've suggested this, that when we talk about diversification, you're really focusing on specializing on what we already are doing well, and that's servicing the, the mining industry, not only here. But around the world. But around that's the right. world. Well, really. we do that now. We do it, yes. And yes. we have a strength. I'm not suggesting you discriminate against somebody starting a flower shop or yeah, no, anything no, no. else. <laughs> what I am saying is that when you have a strength and we have a lot of, a lot of people with world-class talents, you encourage them. Mm -hmm. You actively encourage them. And we haven't done enough of that. 
do we really do overall planning, looking at, you know, these situations that we've described here, you know, Mealy Drive, the downtown, and we seem to do things piecemeal almost. Is that, is, is that a correct assessment? I think that we have a plan for the city that was done in the 60s, which included Mealy Drive. Mm. We have a plan that was done in the 80s and 90s and has been renewed, which still has Mealy Drive, but it's starting to focus on the downtown and so on. We've gone through a period of decline and hard times starting in the mid-70s, mm -hmm. And that basically beat the imagination and the creativity out of our council. Mm -hmm. They got totally involved with amalgamation and all of those problems, and they still don't have a vision for the 21st century for Sudbury. So they're dealing with Maley Drive, a 60-year-old project that's been rejected multiple times. They're not acting on the Railroad One, which their own reports for 30 years have said is worth doing. The shift in the structure of the city and the financing of, of the city in the desires and needs of residents in the city has shifted the focus towards downtown. Amalgamation, of course, threw a lot of the power out mm. to the outlying districts, and that meant that, that council can't really focus on what is its biggest opportunity. It's still looking at Maley Drive, unfortunately. Mm. So the solution, is there a solution in a <laughs> nutshell? <laughs> uh, I mean, it seems like, you know, uh, voices somewhat in the wilderness, and you could be one of them. I'm always in the uh, wilderness, uh, John. But, uh, uh, you know, it, it seems like, and I know that the mayor has instituted a new 10-year uh, plan to look at what we should be looking at for the next 10 years and what ideas uh, the people have. I, uh, I'm hoping he'll ask me. Yeah, yeah. Well, I I understand that at one of the meetings, one person actually showed up and two staff people and one counselor. <laughs> but uh, so obviously, it, uh, do people care? Or or, our, or our, like CMHC says, a lot of seniors and maybe some others are saying, I'm fed up. I'm just leaving town because it's cheaper to go elsewhere. There's a real temptation, mm -hmm. I think, for seniors to go somewhere else. A lot of them like Florida, and I'm hearing people going, <laughs> going to Chile where it's cheap to live. You can only go to Florida for six months, though. Pardon? I'm not sure about Chile, but uh, but, it, 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 but a lot of them seem to be looking at they some want of to, They want to go south, but yeah. that's right. Um, more are looking at moving to southern Ontario yeah. where the kids are. Yeah. And, and where it seems to, you can buy condominiums and some housing less expensive with, with uh, the tax load not as onerous. The tax loads are yeah. lower. That's uh, right. So this is something we should be thinking with respect to maintaining a population base as well. Taking on a project that mm. costs a lot mm. with no benefits means that pensioners are more likely to move. As they move, your property values go down because you don't have a big surge of young people coming in. Anything that encourages people to leave, and Maley Drive, I think, financially will do that, actually threatens the tax base for the whole city, it essentially means that other taxes have to go up as people start to leave. And that's what I mean by fiscal suicide. Mm -hmm. This is a, a bad mistake funding a big white elephant at this stage is very dangerous for the city. I think Maley Drive is dangerous. And, you know, uh, some say that uh, we, we, shouldn't be, we shouldn't be looking at our, our gift, really, which we're getting from the provincial and the federal government. They say you should look a gift, house, or gift horse in the mouth, I guess. But, you know, some councillors feel we can't afford to let this provincial and federal money go because they won't give us any more. If we, That's if absolutely, we, absolutely nonsense. Yeah. The federal and provincial government would much rather be investing in a productive project. Mm -hmm. The moving the rail line out and around gives us safety benefits. Mm -hmm. it, incre it makes the railroads more productive. It gives us more productive land available downtown. That's a productive investment. One of the reasons why the last mayor was so opposed ultimately to talking about moving the rail yards, mm -hmm. she actually did did things I think sabotaged the discussion mm -hmm. was 
that if you let that get on the table, it's so much better than the Mailey Drive investment from the federal and provincial right. point of view that they'll never get money for Mailey Drive. Mm -hmm. And Mailey Drive seemed to them like a quick win. It hasn't turned out to be a quick win. It's been a political embarrassment. But Mailey Drive is on the, was on the last council's agenda simply because they thought it was a quick win and they'd be able to say, look, we finally did something. <laughs> it was a mistake. It was a heritage project. It's a heritage project. Right, right. It's a wasteful heritage project, but they would have been able to say, look, we did something. <laughs> now, with, this is, we're looking at sort of the, in a sense, sort of the microeconomic situation where <laughs> in the macro scene, Canada doesn't seem to be doing extremely well of are we, we, we've experienced not only here but across the country, it seems like there may be a possible housing uh, balloon burst because things go in, in cycles. Should we be tightening our belt in, in, a, in a sense with respect to things we do or should we, we be investing hopefully, hopefully because I think the chamber and the city says that this is a this is an economic boost. We're going to have an <laughs> eighty to one hundred and ten million dollar economic boost by having Mailey Drive put in. This is going to be a real boost to the city. Okay, I love this. I love this. This mm -hmm. is this is accountants and and bankers misunderstanding economic impact analysis. What they've done is they've taken that eighty eight million dollars, and they get that by taking the total amount that they're spending and and using a multiplier. And the multiplier mm -hmm. is about 1.3 or something. Oh, which is what you get when you have, an, when you have a job. Then that if you add a job, you, 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 you have to add, multiply add, it up. You add this because it's services and all that sort That's of thing. That's right. right? Yeah. Now, the trouble with that particular analysis is it's, what they're really doing is measuring spending. Mm -hmm. It's an amount of spending. And they think it's magically converted into, into GDP. Right. Now what happens is if what happens if you hire outside companies to do the road? Mm. Okay, well then you don't get all the spending in the in the country. What happens if you've spent that but the actual value is only a quarter as much as you think? Mm -hmm. Well, the real boost to the economy is the benefits you get. It's not the amount you spend. In national accounting, we do this in macroeconomics. <laughs> right? But right. in macroeconomics, there's a hidden, a hidden piece of yeah. theory. And the theory is that every dollar we spend is correctly spent. It's worth it. Mm -hmm. Not only that, it's worth it to us. This $88 million isn't worth it, and other people are going to get some mm -hmm. of it. So it's absolutely wrong to assume that that's all benefit to Sudbury. That's what. That's the cost. That's not the benefit. Right. So using okay, if I can just use a comparison, let's say that okay, let's say instead of building Mealy Drive, we build an arena. Yeah. Uh, now, how does that? That's still going to cost, say, eighty million dollars or whatever. Say it did. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I don't know. You'd really get a really nice arena for that <laughs> art gallery and convention center all rolled into one. <laughs> but let's say you did that. Yes. Well, how does that? And and the taxpayers are still going to have to pay for that. They're still going to have to pay for it. They're still going to have maintenance costs and operating costs over time. In fact, if you had a choice, which would make you happier, Mailey Drive or a convention center mm -hmm. in an arena downtown? I, well, I know they're it, about yeah. the same. Yeah, they right. cost you money. Yeah, they're right. both consumption goods. Mm -hmm. Neither of them is an investment good. You get a stream of happy kids out of one. You get a small stream of happy, mm -hmm. <laughs> happy mm -hmm. drivers out of the other. But there could be some revenue generation through that type of facility as well. Yes, to an yeah. extent. There, there would be a, yeah. a small, a significant attraction mm -hmm. of events to Sudbury if you built yeah. a big new arena that was well designed, if you built a convention center. And if you paid to go skating or go to a, a hockey game or, yeah. or, or, a, or a convention or whatever. Although what's happening mm -hmm. there is that taxpayers are just paying a little extra for the access and, and so right, that yeah. all stays in the community. Mm -hmm. As long as you're taking money out of the community and putting it back into the community, it yeah. doesn't actually do anything. What you have to do is you have to sell something to somebody outside the community. That's well, how you that, make that, that's the economy you make money. Right, that's right. right. So Mailey Drive can't make money because mm -hmm. it's doing nothing but circulating money inside the community. On that, with respect, that just sort of tweaks something else. And you and I have worked on this, and that's the casino issue. <laughs> and the only value I know you said at that particular time is if you can get money from outside the community. That's right. But that that's doesn't right. seem to happen for most 
Well, as a matter of fact, casinos seem to be dying out uh, in the States, it's a real problem, and in Canada too. I think we have seen that in Sault Ste. Marie, they just closed down their, their, their gambling, their, their tables, uh, because there wasn't anybody there uh, during the daytime. So um, it's, uh, that, that is, is basically the same formula you're applying. It's the same logic. Yeah. If you want to make the city wealthier, you have to bring in money from outside. This $88 million, you can see why the council likes it, because they're going to get this one-time shot mm. of outside money. But it, they're not actually earning it. It's just something they've begged for. It's a charity mm -hmm. investment. Mm. If they can't make that, put that money on something that actually increases the productivity of the city significantly, then they're just not managing well. I think that's why you describe it as a white elephant, because a white elephant is something you get. You have and to keep it's, paying it's a for gift, it. But you have to keep, you can't get rid of it. You have to keep paying for it. <laughs> and, and eventually it, it can almost bankrupt you. <clears throat> I know that most seniors, and we've talked to them, have given the choice for new construction over maintaining our infrastructure, do almost overwhelmingly suggest that we should maintain our infrastructure, fix what we have rather than build new. Uh, yeah. Is that, is that an economic factor as well? Well, it's a matter of preferences. Mm -hmm. If you like bumpy roads, you can have bumpy mm -hmm. roads. What you hear from people in Sudbury is they don't like bumpy roads. Mm -hmm. Well, no one anywhere, I don't think that. <laughs> well, <laughs> I mean, it's absolutely <coughs> clear. I mean, we have groups of people in Sudbury who compete in these contests for the worst road yeah. in, this, in the <laughs> province. Yeah. So they're upset. Yeah. A friend just got stopped by the police for weaving. And he was, asked, <laughs> he was asked if you had been drinking, and he said no, and the, and the officer realized he hadn't been drinking, but when he said that he was just trying to avoid the potholes, he let him go, you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, I th there's a really powerful <clears throat> argument that, that you would actually gain more if you just fixed all those potholes, that the private costs mm -hmm. of all the repairs to vehicles might be larger than the gains mm -hmm. to the people up in the northeast mm -hmm. of having melee drive so they can avoid LaSalle. And the other argument for, this, for the melee drive was it's going to reduce congestion throughout the rest of the city, which uh, it's hard to see how that, and we know we have the figures that, and from the traffic engineers, say that no reduction basically on the Kingsway, hard to say for the Sal and nothing for the rest of the city. <coughs> well, I live mm. in New Sudbury. Mm. I drive on La Salle and Notre Dame. Mm -hmm. uh, there is an absolutely terrible traffic jam sometime between 4.30 and 5 mm -hmm. that costs me all of four or five minutes. <laughs> absolutely terrible, John. It is so bad, and I'm not prepared to spend $25 million to solve, not mm -hmm. to fail to solve yeah. it, because it wouldn't solve it. So is this, is this summing up now, because I think we've covered a whole lot of territory here from yeah. uh, you know, looking at uh, both the micro situation, if we can call it that, for our community, which, you know, over the years, I've been here since 65, I've been here when, uh, when I came, apartment buildings had been built and were not occupied. Uh, you know, we've seen, you know, influxes of population, we've seen families, you know, that used to have, I guess, occupy homes with uh, four or five, six or seven people, now with only one or two people in these homes, which has generated a demand for more housing. Mm -hmm. But uh, these, these things all change over time. And we hear people saying, especially from the seniors' perspective, that seniors, if they don't die, they're going to leave town. So how does that affect the, the whole housing market? You know, it's, uh, it's a situation we have now 30% of new homes uh, remain unsold. Uh, the vacancy rate has gone up to around 5%. Is this a trend that uh, we can see continuing? Is our population as you say, once you reach a critical mass uh, as a service center, regardless of mining, do you maintain that population? Should we be looking at, we have our, our, our city planners have very optimistic projections into the future. Is that, uh, uh, is that, is that come because they like to see it or is that based on any, 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 any factual information? Yeah, I think that if you look at the two industries mm -hmm. that have been growing most in Sudbury, they're the university mm -hmm. and the mining supply sector. And they've managed to off offset labor saving in all the other sectors and especially the mining mm -hmm. sector. 
and add a little bit to the population and they'll continue to do that. So we should have small growth as a result of that. Diane Francis has said that even in other industries you may see due to technological change that perhaps, you know, we're losing some middle management people, some clerical functions yep. are being performed much more efficiently through technology. So uh, I think she predicts, I'm not sure how you feel about it, that maybe this, 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 this growth uh, may be mitigated to a certain extent by older people retiring, but it may not be, have the same potential as some people would suggest. Yeah. Overall, Canada is doing really well. Sudbury is doing surprisingly well mm -hmm. for a, a city that has lost roughly 80% of its major industry's mm -hmm. workforce. Okay, that's astonishing mm -hmm. that the population has stayed as, up as well. What's happening in the housing market is you're seeing a, a gradual shift towards um, multiple dwellings. Mm -hmm. But you're still seeing the developers responding to the the high payoff <laughs> of single family vet dwellings <clears throat> where they don't have to pay mm. the full cost. Like up the valley, they don't pay the full cost mm. of traveling into town. They don't pay the full cost to sewers. The people in the older part of the city where the population is concentrated are subsidizing people all around the city. Now that ought to change. And if that changed, what you'd see is condominiums mm. and and homes for seniors and family homes near the downtown would become more attractive. Now we just have an outdated financial system in the city, but it means that we're not adapting to the future properly. Is our city workable? Some people say that, uh, you know, the creation of the Greater Sudbury with the outlying municipalities made it very difficult for civic government to function. I think that that's true. I, th I think that amalgamation has made it much more difficult for the city of Sudbury, the old city of Sudbury, to do a good job of developing itself. Mm -hmm. It's ended up subsidizing roads and sewers mm -hmm. for the surrounding areas, areas, equalizing, bringing them up to the same That's level. Right. Yeah. The result is that the downtown hasn't gotten the mm -hmm. attention it would have if the people in that area had been in charge. Mm -hmm. Right now, who sits in city council? Well, people from yeah. all over the area, That's and they're right. not terribly interested in making the downtown the most attractive city in Northern Ontario. Well, they have their own. They have, they their, have own, their own uh, interests, yeah. and they should have. Yeah, that's true. But the result is that who speaks for the heart of the city? Mm -hmm. They've divided it up into a bunch of mm -hmm. wards, all of which include either a majority or a very large fraction mm -hmm. that aren't interested in the downtown. Let's say that uh, this hadn't happened, the amalgamation hadn't happened. Would the other communities have withered and died or would they have been able to maintain themselves? You go, I go across the country and I see lots of communities like Valley East and even, <laughs> even Cape Creole and Garson they seem to be functioning. As a matter of fact, some of their services seem to be a lot better than we have here. I, I haven't been able to quite figure that out, but uh, would we have been better off if this hadn't have happened? I mean, I know it's in, in, in retrospect, it's, I guess it's hard to go back or it would be impossible, but I'm just wondering what your feelings are. Oh, feelings, because yeah. I haven't spent a lot of time on mm -hmm. this issue. I think that, that the city didn't gain a lot from amalgamation, mm -hmm. and it did set back some of the more progressive plans for the downtown and for mm -hmm. Sudbury proper. Mm -hmm. So you have, for example, the fact that the Four Corners area has developed as the real new urban area. Mm -hmm. There is no real plan for Four Corners. Nobody thought it was important enough. No. It, those apartment buildings have just snuck in there. <laughs> That's right. There, there are no bicycle paths designed. No, no. Here you had the opportunity to redesign that whole corner of the city. Nobody paid any attention. Why is that? Well, it's because they were worrying about issues for Greater Sudbury mm. and not worrying about Sudbury. So I think the, and the result, of course, is that you don't have an economic development mm -hmm. strategy that works, you don't have a housing strategy that works, and in all probability, all those other communities are poorer as a result. Mm -hmm. Well, I know that no one seems to be happy. <laughs> you, know, there's, you, you talk to people in Cape Real, yes. in the Valley, Garson, Lively, of you know the services that they enjoyed before, they feel, uh, well, they were there for them. Yes, uh, yeah, and, yeah. And, and now it's, uh, it's sort of this centralized 
bureaucracy which doesn't seem to recognize or, or tries to recognize or maybe doesn't have the money enough to recognize. We, 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 we sort of wonder whether or not the services are not there because or are not being provided because they're, they're just not able to or they're overloaded or, or they've reached some point of stagnation or constipation or something. But uh, it seems like uh, it's, it's, it's a quandary that uh, no one seems to be able to resolve. Or am I just yeah. talking as an older person here, frustrated? Ah, <laughs> uh, maybe we're all getting old and frustrated. <laughs> it, it does look like the new amalgamated city hasn't worked financially. Mm -hmm. The city of Sudbury didn't have debt. We still don't have appreciable debt mm -hmm. financially, but the political candidates for council agreed that they would not raise taxes or they'd lower taxes, and so we now have huge infrastructure debt. People talk about $750 million, mm -hmm. a billion dollars worth of infrastructure debt. Well, that is real debt. If you were running the city properly, you'd be working out how you paid for that, mm -hmm. not looking to nibble little bits of money off of other projects. Some people have suggested that Somehow this figure may be somewhat inflated. Sure, it's inflated. So, so say it's only five, yeah. half a billion yeah. dollars. And how do you actually, what I think many would like to see, talking about transparency, is a look at the, the reserve funds. Where are they? What are they allocated for? And, and you know, is there, are there certain things, if you didn't do Melee, could you be saving $20 million for the city? Or if you, if you didn't do a brand new road every year, would this be a saving you could then devote yeah, you, for Yeah, you can deal with all of those. Yeah. I mean, what, one, I like to do things in a really simple yeah. way. Say there's half a billion dollars in infrastructure mm -hmm. debt. Okay, that's probably growing at 10% a year. Mm -hmm. How much is 10% of half a billion dollars? It's mm -hmm. $50 million a year. Right. Okay, what's the interest on that? Well, it's $25 million yeah. a year at least. So what we have is a shortfall in our revenue for taking care of our infrastructure between 25 and $50 million a year. If we wanted to fix up our, if we just wanted to maintain the infrastructure, it sounds like we have to add $25 million a year to our revenue, mm -hmm. not this little number of 10.5 <laughs> for Maley. If we took that 10.5 million mm. for Maley, and then mm. we took the 2.3, one-tenth of what it would take to get the infrastructure right. underway, we'd still be in trouble. So this seems like, it seems to me like this is letting the house fall down so you can buy trinkets. Mm. Now we do have a certain amount of leeway in our borrowing. Apparently we're not anywhere near the amount oh, we can actually the, borrow. The, the city can yeah. borrow. The yeah, city can borrow, but uh, now there's some provincial guidelines with respect to how much you can <laughs> borrow. But apparently there's, there's, a, there's a certain amount that is still left that we can borrow if we wish. The city can borrow yeah. a lot. Yeah. Uh, borrowing is not a problem. Yeah. They've been avoided borrowing. They've been quite careful about that. Mm -hmm. They've been perhaps too careful. Mm -hmm. But you still have to deal with those numbers. If there's half a billion dollars that you have to pay for, that's an interest charge of $25 million mm -hmm. a year. So you, That's an you, so you have to borrow to pay the interest? You, well, uh, if, or, if you don't if you raise do your, the, if you, you do not raise right. your taxes, right. you can't pay it. Mm -hmm. You you simply have to get your revenues up by a large number, like twenty five million dollars, mm -hmm. and that would let you. That may not let you eat into the infrastructure, but at least you won't be going into debt. Mm -hmm. With our provincial government reducing the transfer payments every year, this, this uh, puts a bit of a squeeze on, this, on, on, on the whole equation. It does, yeah. <coughs> they, we're largely restricted to tax <coughs> revenues. We, property taxes are those sources of revenue that people really vote on and get upset about, so it's really hard to get it. So they want services, roads, sewers. Mm -hmm. They don't want property taxes. It's a, it's an impossible <laughs> problem. <laughs> well, you're an economist, right? And economists, as they say, are always good at looking back yep. at, and analyze happened, right? But, uh, you know, and always a little dangerous looking forward. As a matter of fact, I understand a lot of economists like to look forward because they don't want to We're, we're not especially good no, at no, it, yeah. the truth. Nobody is, but no, we're, no. Not, we're no better. <laughs> but we can look at certain things and say, 
this is reasonable and this isn't reasonable at the time. Yes. And, uh, and we do that in our own personal finances too. You know, is it reasonable to go out and buy a new super expensive car if what we have is still running? At yeah. least for a while. Unless we can get a good deal. The city is saying that Melee Drive is a good deal. We can't afford to pass up this Cadillac or whatever it happens to be. Lincoln, Absolutely. Lexus, yep. Because we're getting two thirds paid for. Yes. Yeah. And it's true mm -hmm. that the particular estimate we have doesn't include the wheels. Doesn't It do, doesn't <laughs> include a lot of the amenities yeah. you want in your new vehicle. They're going to be added later. So when we come to pick up Melee Drive, we'll discover they've added a cost. And then when we run it for a while, we'll realize that, well, we need a trailer hitch and we really need to put an air conditioner into it and 25 <laughs> other things. And when we're done, it costs $106 million. Which possibly could have gone to taking care of our structure deficit. It would be a yeah. big chunk. $160 million out of $700 million is a mm. really decent sized bite. Uh, $700 million is spread over it. Now that's spread over it, like fixing well, a yeah, roof. Well, but they're we talking about yeah. spread, spreading this over that's, years. That's true too. Well, it's been very interesting. <laughs> I'm, I'm exhausted. <laughs> <laughs> well, this, this conversation makes me feel very grumpy about my city. <laughs> <laughs> but don't other cities have the same situation? Uh, Most of them do. Yeah. So, uh, the southern cities mostly, and so there's an escape hatch for them. Mm -hmm. But we don't have the growth. How we, did cities like Windsor have suffered catastrophic loss in the, in the, in the, in the, in the motor industry? But uh, they haven't had a tax increase for six years. They've built new water sports, new arena, bicycle paths. They've done really well, paid down their debt, and increased their reserves. <laughs> and I've suggested to our city that maybe you should look at Windsor, but uh, the only thing I've heard is they have a higher assessment base. They have well, quite a lot larger yeah, base. Yeah, which may be a factor. They, um, I don't know much about yeah. what Windsor's done. They took a real hit as people started moving yeah. out of town and their, their assessment dropped. They cut all the new projects. Mm -hmm. They cut all the new road projects entirely. That's one of the biggest features. And then they, no road project, no um, major infrastructure project that had been on the books, stayed on the books. They mm -hmm. all had to start over with those. Mm -hmm. They started concentrating on things that attract people and make it a good place to live. They started concentrating on things that attract new kinds of businesses. They also downsized their local government to a certain extent. Yes, that's right. I think they went through a strike, as a matter of fact. Uh, I don't know about uh, that. But, uh, if you tell me, I'll believe you. Yeah, but uh, so there's, there's, if you want to do it, there could be tough medicine. There would be tough medicine if we wanted to mm -hmm. get, if we want to deal with just the infrastructure deficit, it's going to be a tough project. We need to reorganize, reorganize the finances. We need to start charging the full cost the taxpayers for what they're asking for. Mm -hmm. And they won't ask for so much and then it gets easier. <laughs> <laughs> well, if, if you knew that repairs for this road yeah. out here, mm -hmm. which you use, yeah. were going on your tax bill directly, mm -hmm. you'd think a little bit differently mm -hmm. about it, right? But didn't that happen in California when all of a sudden they, they turned down tax increase after tax increase after tax increase and when everything fell apart they had to they had to reevaluate and, and actually say, okay, we're willing to pay now. So that's uh, sort of like tough medicine. Yes. <laughs> okay, now we're in the whole yeah, different realm. Yeah. But summing up, you feel, and you still stick to the fact that you feel that Melee Drive is fiscal suicide at this time. It might be a little bit dramatic a statement, but basically, yes. It's a very bad move for the city and it will hurt it in the future. And that possibly looking at projects like uh, rail removal might be an alternative that would benefit really the whole city. Yep, more jobs, more tax mm -hmm. revenue, mm -hmm. more attractive downtown, making it possible to attract new businesses. And also maybe fixing, our, fixing up our city a little bit and making it more attractive. Mm -hmm. I know that I keep hearing this, and just closing off, I keep hearing this, the city says, we gotta create jobs, we gotta create jobs. As I understand it, the only way the city can create jobs directly is to hire people for the city. <laughs> but why do why do businesses come to a community? Is it because there's a labor supply there? It's an attractive place to live. Uh, taxation is reasonable. 
there's building opportunities, are all those factors? So is that the job for the cities to do that rather than hiring people? I yeah. yeah, people used to go to transportation centers, mines, uh, places like that mm. where the jobs were. Increasingly, jobs go to where the best people are. So if Sudbury were to concentrate on, uh, this sounds almost hokey, but <laughs> on culture and education, mm -hmm. it would attract businesses. Because you want to be where you want to feel good if you're, yeah, if, you, you're the, if you're the owner of the business or you want to be, people who you. want to be in you. a place you like and mm -hmm. you want to know that you've got good people who don't want to leave. Mm -hmm. So where do you get the good people? You've got to start holding some of the young people here because it's an attractive place for them. You've got to invest in more ability than you really need because people go where the businesses go where there's extra capacity. Mm -hmm. you need, that's why we have a school of architecture because right. we knew we needed design capacity in the north. Yeah. And it's why we had the taxation center because there was workers that were available. That's right. Yeah. There, that was a business yeah. we could politically move. Yeah, yeah. Okay. And besides, they had ran out of workers in Hamilton and Ottawa. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> the so truth was there, right? <laughs> okay. You're, you're finished with me, I think. Well, I thank you very much for coming along, Dr. David Robinson, Professor of Economics at uh, Laurentian University. We've been talking about not only seniors' issues, but issues that affect uh, the whole city. We've covered a whole wide range of topics. And, of course, we invite uh, your comments as well, too, and you can visit our website, which is friendly to seniors.c. Dot C, C. Friendly to seniors dot C A. <laughs> All Canadian. Mm -hmm. Thanks once again. All right. Bye Thank you. Bye bye. <laughs>